Hello, I hope this video finds you well. Tonight's night 15 and my nightly ritual of recording and coding that solution while schools are closed. Um, so whether you're a student of mine or someone out there just learning the program, please don't hesitate to send me along any questions or comments. All right, tonight we're going to look at string bits, which is in the warm up to section of Python. Turns out um, the warm up to section of Java doesn't have this problem, so I'll do a different one. But with that, let's dive in. So given a string, return a new string made of every other char, starting with the first. So hello yields hello. And now we can look at those examples. String bits, hello, hello. String bits, hi, h. And string bits, h-e-e-o-l-o-l-e-o, -E 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 gives us hello. And we can see that because we grab every second letter. Now, if you take these and write them out, what you're going to notice is that you know, it's grabbing indexes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And so it's grabbing the even-valued indexes. And then, what, so what we're going to do is we're basically going to go through string construction, but we're just going to add on the even-valued index values. Even-valued characters. Index-valued characters. And I'm going to do this two ways. And I've written a bit of a comment here for both of them. And I remind you, you can find all of these at the GitHub repo that I've developed um, in the link below. Approach one is a better and more efficient approach. And conceptually, this is a great time for me to kind of address that question of, when do I need a loop um, when I'm working with strings? And you need a loop if you have to point at each letter when you try and find the solution. So often when I'm working with students, you know, I'll say something like, okay, take every second letter and what is the new string you generate? And they'll quickly say HLO without thinking. And then I say, okay, now imagine that you have a thousand letters and you see them go to the board and they'll point at each second letter. And the minute you have to point at each letter in sequence, or every second letter, you need a loop. So in this case, we want to take each second letter starting at index 0. So what we can do is we can actually write a loop to increment by 2. So we start by making some string called result, which is empty. And then I write a simple 4i in range loop. And we're going to start at 0. We're going to go from len str. And we're going to increment by 2 each time. We simply say result is equal to result plus str and i. And then... I return the result outside the loop, of course. And I hit go, and there it is. So what you might be starting to realize is that this, this loop structure is really powerful when we're working with strings, and in fact, when we're working with lists as well. And that by playing with this, you know, the starting value, the, the check value, and the change value, you can grab every second letter, every third letter. Um, there's an infinite number of possibilities you can do with this. Now, we're going to do this the second way. And the second way is a little less efficient, you know, but what it does is it highlights two things that I really, I really think are important for a developing programmer. The first thing that it highlights is this idea of a for-if structure. You know, again, I've said this before, students often say to me, what, what, what algorithms do I need to memorize? And it, it, there's not specific ones you need to memorize, but there are structures you need to know. You need to know what a for loop looks like, a conditional structure looks like. But I always like to say for beginning programmers, this idea of a for if combo. It's having a for loop with one if statement inside of it. And we said this at the start. We notice that when we construct the string, we take every second character, and all of those characters have even indexes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a string construction here. So I'll make result equal to an empty string. I'm going to set a 4i in range loop. I'm going to start it at index 0, go to the length of str, and increment it by 1. And of course, if I do result equals result plus str at i and return that, I'm going to get everything wrong. Let's say it. Notice how I get the full word. So what do I want to do? I only want to do this if the index is even. And how do I do that? Is I put this inside an if statement. I say if i mod 2 is equivalent to 0, only then do I say result is equal to result plus str. And there we go. This is a really powerful idea. This idea of checking if a number is even or odd using the mod 2. It shows up all the time, and it's really quite useful. So make sure you have that in the back of your pocket when you're coding. And with that, we'll wrap up. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Have a wonderful day.